cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or visit weather.com. everyone from Battery Park City, which is virtually underwater at this time. I'm standing on what little real estate we have that's nationally not underwater here. We've got water that has risen to record levels in many places, including here in New York City. People are being rescued in boats. We understand the subway is flooding, and the good news is kind of shut down power before all this water moved in. But we're still not at high tide yet. We still may see a further rise in the surge, and there's not many ways out of here at this point. Uh, so we're hoping that the water doesn't get uh, much higher than it is right now here. So, uh, you know, again, behind me here, I stand on what is debris. The further back we go, about 40 yards or so, that is as high as the water goes. And I'm not going to walk back there. It's probably about waist high right now. So this is the highest the water has ever gotten here uh, in New York City. And really, we've had many places that have recorded uh, all-time records uh, in terms of the storm surge. Just a horrible evening here, uh, as we have now heard from the city of New York, where people are asked to shelter in place. Go indoors and stay there until further notice. That is a, quite an alarming statement when you think about a city of this magnitude. And I'll tell you, just looking around tonight, whether we look at Brooklyn, whether we look at Bayonne or Staten Island or Jersey City, there's just not much light out there because it, in the last hour or two, it has been like the 4th of July here. And unfortunately, that means a lot of power outages, power outages that continue to mount across the city and surrounding areas. All right, Brian Norcross, let's talk about this. Where are we at in terms of the tide? In, uh, in terms of the surge as well. What are you seeing on the gauges? Well, the, the, tie, the, the, the tide gauge is incredible, 13.7 feet at the battery, which is now almost two and a half feet above the 1821 hurricane that took the water to Canal Street in a very different uh, New York City there. But let me punch up the map here of New York and let me show you what's uh, going on. By the way, the Hurricane Center just reported in uh, 80 mile an hour winds with what we're calling superstorm Sandy. They use the technical term post-tropical cyclone Sandy. Uh, couldn't hardly be more technical name than that, could it? 80 mile an hour winds is the peak and the pressure is coming up as the center has gone ashore. All right, let's go back to the, the map of uh, lower Manhattan here and uh, let me locate uh, Jim for you. Over here is Battery Park City. We just got a report here at uh, four New York Plaza, and four New York Plaza is down on this side of the battery, of six feet of water outside of the building. Uh, there, so what that is, that's the East River. Here's the East River coming down here. Now we know that in the East Village here, the water has covered part of the East Village, and that's where the evacuations were of the fire department using boats there, and the cars were underwater, and also the FDR Drive. Uh, right there, right on the edge, is way underwater, deep underwater, uh, and which is not a totally uncommon thing that happens in nor'easters sometimes. Jim uh, Cantori, are you still there? Yeah, Brian, look at this. I don't know if you can see uh, the difference, but look at the flashes going on over in Jersey City. I uh, see. It. I mean, you've got power surges everywhere. It, I mean, look at it. It looks like a, a 4th of July fireworks display over there. That is the kind of, of stuff that we're seeing tonight, uh, whether it be Jersey City, whether it be Bayonne, whether it be Staten Island, down toward Brooklyn as well. This is what we're seeing in the water, unfortunately, uh, is it, still coming up. This is absolutely unbelievable, guys. It's mind-boggling uh, what we're seeing here tonight in New York. Again, uh, in case you're just joining us, we understand there are water rescues on Grand Avenue. We also understand that the subways are also filling with water. We have heard uh, from the city in New York where they want everyone to just stay inside until further notice. Uh, statements, quite frankly, I I've never heard in my life. Well, Jim, right? Jim let me uh, finish the answer to the question that you asked just a moment ago. So we have this record okay. uh, water rise so far. So what's going to happen from now? Well, we're past high tide now. So we're going to, the tide is going to go down, so that's good. But the problem is that the, yes. the wind is aimed directly into where you are. It's coming from the southeast right now. And uh, the last report I see here from uh, JFK is gusting to 80 miles an hour. And at the buoys offshore, we have sustained over 50 Sun's burning. Knots. You smell that? Uh, what do you have burning there, Jim? Is that a light burning or what is no, that? No, I don't know. I, I... I, I don't know. It could be a, it could be a building. Uh, I'm not really sure, but there's a, a distinct smell of a, something that's uh, that's burning. It, it it's got a little bit of a petroleum smell to it, but uh, it, it almost seems like a structural fire of some sort. I can't see 
anything off to my distance, but uh, you know, with this uh, with this south wind, the, the smell of, of whatever is burning to my south is, is coming this way. Ryan, the water is still coming up here. Uh, yeah, we're so, not, so you know, we're, saying we're close to high tide, but. The, the tide is going I mean, down, but we're, we're, as you know, it takes a good while uh, for the tide really to start going down, right? It's kind of a, about the same at high tide. All right, so we also have reports now in, from LaGuardia that the water there is covering the runway. We thought it must be, given the tide reports we've seen on Long Island Sound, those incredible numbers up there of nearly 13 feet above normal on Long Island Sound. So not a surprising thing that we lose. Uh, no, there's Jim there. So, so all around that. And in every direction, we're seeing uh, this flooding on anything that's remotely low lying. Uh, yeah, have you, do you, have you, do you, are you able to get any reports from what people are talking about in the media there, uh, where you are, Jim? Or are you just tied up with, with what you're doing for us? No, and, uh, I, I'm not tied up doing this. We're, we're doing stuff for the network as well, yeah, Brian. So it, it, I'm pretty much tied up out here. And, and quite frankly, I, uh, you know, I, I wish I had pulled back even further than we did uh, at this point in time. But there's no, no second guessing at this point. We've got a place to go up, if you will. So, so uh, that should make you feel good. We knew we always had that. We planned for that ahead of time. But um, at, at this point, uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna hope that the surge doesn't get to too much higher, nor does the tide. Because, well, here's the news. Uh, believe me, as far as any distance that we go is is, is filled with water. Right, because you've got you got two things going here: the, the tide, you know, just the tide, the plain old everyday tide. Right. That's peaked, so that's not going to be any worse. And the, it looks like the wind is about at an optimal direction. So. Uh, you know, that doesn't yeah. mean that it's finalized, but we were waiting for it to get to that optimal direction to see how far in the water came. We've seen that, so it doesn't, doesn't look like the wind's going to get any stronger. So some indications maybe we may be near the peak, if not at the peak. So uh, yeah, you know, I, just watch yourself there just in case, because figuring out storm surge is a really dicey business. Well, and, and that's what we talked about. When, we, when you guys talked earlier about two to three feet coming up, uh, we knew that that's where we would be able to retreat to. We're not even quite there yet as far as how back we're going to go. So uh, that's the good news. But, uh, you know, it's just unnerving. I mean, to anyone who's standing outside and watching the water pretty much come up around you, especially when you're down here in the battery, you look uptown, uh, not many lights at all. You smell something burning, so you know that's going on. Uh, again, as I mentioned, down toward Brooklyn or out toward Staten Island, Bayonne, uh, uh, Jersey City, parts of this that would never, ever be as dark as it is tonight, Yeah, even even on your cloudiest, rainiest nights, but because of so much power loss that uh, continues to happen here, these are just things that boggle the mind. Again, uh, the strongest statement of all is the city of New York urging residents to stay indoors until further notice because of this wind that's coming through here and certainly, uh, obviously, the rising water here in lower Manhattan. Brian, back to you. All right, uh, Jim Cantore, stay safe there and check back in with us when you can. So what those flashes we were seeing, what that is, that's uh, when you have a power line that's kind of hanging out there and then you get a tree limb that hits that power line and it shorts out the power line and those are transformers that short out and you get this kind of aquamarine flash and I say this from going through a bunch of hurricanes and seeing it happen right before my eyes, and that's not, certainly not a good sign for the power grid. All right, back to you, Chris and Crystal. Uh, Brian, thank you very much for that. And the latest numbers on the customers without power, almost three and a half million customers without power right now. And that's in at least 11 states, by the way, from North Carolina all the way to Maine. And we have been able to confirm now five storm-related deaths in New York State, uh, obviously caused by Superstorm uh, Sandy, the New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services confirming that. Five people have died in New York State. We still have flooding ongoing, damaging wind gusts, still reporting hurricane force winds in many areas, even though we are now dealing with with a, a whole different system here. But look at some of the water that is coming in uh, along the Hudson. Now, uh, this was recorded earlier when things were just beginning. And then you saw Jim in the Battery Park City with the water continuing to rise. A lot of reports out of the East Village in Lower Manhattan right now. Uh, the fire department there evacuated by boats. The flooding is uh, tremendous in that area. Cars underwater as the water surges in from the East River. And if you've been watching the Weather Channel today, Day, you know that New Jersey has been getting hit very hard by Superstorm Sandy. We want to go right now to meteorologist Mike Seidel in Point Pleasant Beach, New Jersey.
It's gone from bad to worse tonight on the Jersey Shore. We're in Point Pleasant Beach. Now, all day long, we were up on the dune and on the beach. We pulled back, first because of the winds ripping at our satellite dish, gusting over Hurricane 4, 75 to 80 miles an hour, and then the overwash taking out the entire dune, uh, just decimating it. And now we're a block to a block and a half inland. And look at the surge at high tide here. We had forecasted a four to eight foot surge. We don't know where it stands, but it's certainly running much higher than Irene as the water runs through the streets. They told me they've never had water come up to the front door of the hotel. That all changed. We're at the back door and look at the sandbags and the sea foam. And that's just one of the pieces of debris, a lot of debris coming around the bend as the wind is still whipping here with gusts 60 to 65 miles an hour. The rain has backed off. That's a good thing. But as you look down the street, just look at the force of the water. It's like a raging river as it blows inland. There goes another pretty good gust around the corner of these buildings. We've also seen some minor debris uh, coming off the roofs of shingles and some gutters. With the tide now high and then going down and the winds eventually blowing offshore, we should see this water backing off by sometime on Tuesday morning. But again, this is a lot worse than Irene. Sandy Hook, the tide gauge, setting an all-time record more than two and a half feet above Hurricane Donna's 10.1 feet in 1960 and even higher than Irene was last year. This uh, hurricane, one for the record books, has basically rearranged the Jersey Shore. Back to you. Meteorologist Mike Seidel, thank you for that report. And all along we've been talking about this